Hello guys and welcome back to Boss Admirers. Today we are here to analyze last night's game against Getafe. So make sure you watch this video till the end without skipping. Now before we begin, I'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel and hit that like button right now if you are new. Our posts have been bringing in amazing responses from you guys and we have therefore decided to set a target of 100 likes on this video. Go ahead, smash that button and hit the bell icon to remain notified whenever we post so that you never miss out on a single moment from your favorite club, Football Club Barcelona. Alright then, enough talking, let's move on to the game. Now Barcelona had the psychological advantage going into this game but none of that mattered as Ketafe were high on form after holding Real Madrid to a nil-nil draw just in the previous match day. However, Barcelona were not behind in terms of confidence either, having secured a thumping 4-0 victory over Athletic Bilbao last weekend in the Copa del Rey final. And the way they played only displayed that confidence further. The game was played last night in the backdrop of an intense race to the La Liga as Real Madrid had dropped points to this very same team four days back. It was a must-win game for Barcelona and now on every game will be that way if Barcelona are to have any hopes of securing a domestic double. The Blaugrania began the game with an attacking intent, going all out up front. Manager Komen decided to opt for the well-worked 3-5-2 formation and it seemed effective. With Oscar at the right, PK at the center and Longley at the left, it was the same defensive line that Komen had deployed in the Copa del Rey final. The aggressive football almost paid off when Messi attempted a long shot from outside the box and it hit the woodwork. The ball hit the underside of the crossbar and bounced right of the goal line as the keeper was left bamboozled and rooted to the spot. Had it been half an inch lower, the goalie would have been but a mere spectator to that spectacular goal. However, the wait for a goal didn't last long as in the 8th minute, Sergio Busquets split apart the defense like a hot knife through butter with an exquisite through ball. Messi lashed himself onto the end of it, sprinted past the defenders and made no mistake against the keeper to make it 1-0. Once again, credit to Coleman for using Busquets as a pivot and making him as effective as he was in Pep Guardiola's time. Getafe seemed dangerous on certain occasions though and they managed to pull one back in the 12th minute when Sergio Roberto lost his man Maximovic who crossed the ball in from the left flank and it came off long lay to end up in the back of the Blaugrania net. A rather embarrassing own goal by the Frenchman, however, he could not probably have done anything about that because the ball came too quickly at him. The most hilarious moment, however, came in the 28th minute when Getafe's defender Sufyan Chakla tried to pass the ball back to goalkeeper David Soria under pressure from Messi, Griezmann and Pedri. Now Soria misread his intentions and came off his line to collect but the defender had already launched it with too much power at his goalkeeper. A horrendous defensive lapse caused by miscommunication and Barca saw their lead restored. About 5 minutes later, in the 33rd minute, after playing ping pong with the ball inside the Getafe box, Messi finally got impatient and shot at the far post. The ball once again came off the upright but luckily this time it landed right at Messi's feet and the Argentine put it inside from the tightest of angles to make it 3-1. Komen decided to take off PK and Longley in the second half and put on Illich and Araujo. However, it was Araujo's mistake inside the penalty box that led the referee to consult VAR and award a penalty to Getafe which Eres Unal converted. At this point in the game, Barcelona seemed to be off their form with which they had begun the game and very much under pressure. Getafe seemed to get closer to equalizing with every single attack. 
Interestingly enough, it was at this moment that led to an incident with Mingeza. Oscar had ventured deep into the attacking half as he often does. However, with Getafe increasing their intensity of attacks and Barcelona barely holding on to the one goal lead, that clearly was not what boss Ronald Koeman had instructed him to do. The coach looked agitated and furious on the touchline. It took him off after some time and when Oscar went to shake hands with Koeman, the cameras showed a small bust up as Ronald clearly refused to do so. Mingeza looked to be in pain. However, it didn't dampen the team spirit and somehow Barcelona seemed to regain part of the hold on the game. A smooth delivery from Leo Messi from the corner saw Araujo head it in with a bang and redeem himself for the penalty he had given away. It was 4-1 at this point. However, the most touching part of the game came in the added time. Griezmann was brought down inside the box and everybody expected Messi to take the resulting penalty which would see him complete his hat-trick, something he hasn't done in a long time. However, to everyone's great surprise, he wasted no time in letting Griezmann take the spot kick, who looked equally surprised. Yet another example of humility and leadership by the Argentine. In the end, he didn't disappoint and made it 5-2 right when the referee blew for full time. Well, Busquets and Dijon were amazing last night and to be fair, Dijon being amazing in every game is something we have gotten so much used to that it doesn't even draw the attention it deserves. Messi, however, was the star performer. No doubt about that. Most of Barcelona's attacks were equally distributed throughout the pitch and on all the flanks and the decision to play Sergi Roberto as the right midfielder who had been given his first start since injury proved effective. Pedri operated between the lines and forced errors in the Getafe defence. However, the youngster seemed to be off his usual form, misplacing too many passes and giving away the ball cheaply too many times. However, it was the entire squad that pulled through as one single unit, thus effectively covering up for each other's minor mistakes. Despite having a short dry spell in the game, it was Barcelona who finally pulled through. We dominated the game, had an absolutely massive 80.5% ball possession, 9 shots, 6 of which hit the target and completed 922 passes. In the end, it was Barcelona who got rewarded for the persistence. It was Barca who got the 3 points, leaving them 3rd in the league, 5 points behind Atleti and 2 behind Real with a game in hand. A win in the next game would see Barcelona go up in the second place, which means that the league is still very much in their own hands as they face Atletico Madrid after 3 match days. Now that will be all for today's episode Kules. Hope you guys liked it and found it helpful. Now don't forget there is a huge giveaway of official Barcelona merchandise once we hit 1000 subscribers. And frankly speaking, we will hit it very soon. So make sure you share this channel's link with your like-minded Blaugrania friends and ask them to follow us and subscribe to us as well. Until the next time guys, Viscal Barca, Viscal Catalunya.